Hello, my name is Crystal Zavallo. I'm the Marketing Communication Specialist here at Student Health Services. Fun fact, my undergraduate degree from UCF was a Bachelor in Fine Arts. So we're gonna be using that skill today to kind of walk you through painting this. This is a great safe activity that you can either do over Zoom by playing this video and kind of having your friends or family join in with you, your roommates or other house or suite mates, or people that are within your bubble that you feel comfortable being around can get together and do this as a fun social activity and you all get to bring home a piece of art afterwards. So we're going to put together a supply list for you. All of these items are pretty cheap. You should be able to get them from any place like Walmart, a local hobby store, etc. Or depending on when you're viewing this video, you can pick up from our partners over at Wellness and Health Promotion Services. They have put together um, ready to paint kits. So you can pick that up and get everything you need, minus a couple additional things that we'll go over. So either way, glad you're here. Let's have fun and let's do some painting. But before that, make sure you gather your supplies, you're in an area that you can either cover so you don't make a mess or is okay to get paint on because it might happen. Gather up some um, food, snacks, drinks. Um, our friends over at Whips, they do have a lot of great recipes available. We'll link that video so you can check out some of their um, videos that they have there for some ideas to make some healthy drinks, some healthy snacks to share, or just to enjoy yourself. Hey, it's cool. Self-care is important. So we can go ahead and get all those things doing. So let's get started. So first things first, we're going to need to gather all of our supplies, starting with a tablecloth of some kind. So we're going to be working with acrylic paints, which while water-based and non-toxic, so if it gets on your skin, it's going to come out easy. If it gets on things like carpet, couches, clothing, not going to come out easy. So I recommend some sort of table cover. Got this one for less than a dollar, um, or if you have an old towel or sheet or something like that, totally fine. Another thing you're going to need is your paint. So um, this is the brand I prefer, mainly because they are less than a dollar at Walmart, so it's really easy to find them and get them. Um, but any type of acrylic paint will do. Keep in mind, when we're doing this today, this is the brand that I'll be using. And if you picked up a packet of supplies already, this is the type of paint that you will be given as well. The biggest thing is the consistency. So the reason why I like this one is because it is a more liquid consistency, which for me personally, makes painting easier, I can work faster, and you use less paint and you can mix easier because again of that more liquid consistency. Higher quality paints are going to be thicker, which is really great if you're wanting to add things like texture to your paintings, but you will use more of the painting and it's hard to spread across a whole canvas. So depending on the type you buy, just keep that in mind that if you're using something that is thicker, you might have a little bit of different experience than what we're going to be going through today. But these are the six colors that we're going to be working with today. Um, and we are going to be mixing one color. You'll also need your brush, a blank canvas. Um, so this is, we're going to be doing an eight by 10 size today. Feel free to do any size you want, but when we're talking proportions and things like that today, we will be working on eight by 10. You can buy canvases again at places like Walmart, craft stores, etc. You can buy them in packs, singles. This is called a canvas board where it's just kind of a thin board. Um, you can also buy the gallery canvases or thicker canvases that do have more of a dimension on the side. Then of course, I do recommend you have some paper towels. I have two here, that's I would recommend. If you did not pick up the paints from um, us earlier, this is what they would have come packed in, little cups. If you didn't, weren't able to get one of those kits, get a paper plate just so you can have something to use as your palette, totally fine. Um, either way, whatever you have works. And then you're gonna need a solo cup of some kind. Um, if you don't have an exact solo cup, that's fine. Um, we're going to use this to put our water for rinsing our brushes in, as well as we're going to be using it as a stencil. So if you don't have an exact solo cup, just make sure you have a cup that is slightly bigger on one end and smaller on the other, because we're going to be using these to trace two circles. 
So then once you've gathered all your supplies, time to prep your area. All right. So now that we've gathered all of our supplies, we've prepped our station, make sure you're wearing um, old clothing or clothing you don't necessarily mind if you get paint on it. Because again, if it gets on your clothing, it's not going to come out. Don't worry about your hands, but if you want to wear some protective gloves, absolutely, totally okay. Um, but it will wash off your skin, no problem. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of draw um, our circle so we kind of have an idea of how it's going to lay out. So using the silver cup like I mentioned. The bigger portion is going to be the round body of our citronaut. The top portion is going to be for his head. Grab a pencil, make sure you don't press too hard. Um, and we're going to place that in the lower left hand corner. Um, so we're just going to place it kind of where we want to. Um, doesn't have to be precise, totally up to you. And again, you're going to want to make sure when you draw it that you don't press too hard. You're wanting a pencil marking that's just dark enough so you can see it, but you still want to be able to paint over it. So go ahead and draw that circle of the body. As you can see, there it is. Flip your solo cup and now we're going to do the head, which is just above, just touching at the edge here for the head. Trace that again, make sure you are not pressing super hard and we're done. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is just kind of so you can get a general visual of your where your body's gonna be. Now, before you start painting, take a moment. Now's a good time to go fill that solo cup up with water. You don't wanna fill it all the way just cause you might easily spill it. But just putting a little bit, just basically enough to cover the bottom of your brushes. All right, now that I've got my water, it's time for the fun part. Let's start painting. So we're gonna actually start our painting by doing the galaxy sky first. Um, personally, in my painting experience, I do like to start with the background and work up to layering onto the foreground. Um, the reason why we do our circles is we're going to try to avoid painting in this area as much as possible. But my favorite part about this painting is there's no need to be precise. So if you get some over, don't worry about it. So then how we're gonna do our galaxy is going to be a mixture of black, blue, and purple. Um, there is no rhyme or reason. You can just dip your brush in and just kind of start spreading it like crazy. Spreading it everywhere you want it. And the best part is too, you don't have to worry about brushing or cleaning your brush between uses. Just dip in the next color you want and just kind of start smearing that one in too. I call this style uh, wet, wet on wet or wet blending. Basically you're using your canvas as your palette. So you're not worrying about mixing off the palette. You're doing all of your mixing right here in one place. So I'm gonna grab some purple. And like I mentioned before, as you can see, I'm going within that line. It's fine. You don't have to be perfect at all. But it's just going to help us when we go to put that orange on, since orange is a lighter color, to make sure we're covering all of it. So again, just go ahead and just have fun with this. There's no rhyme or reason. doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, I'm able to move very quickly because of how thin and great these paints are. They spread nice and easy. black here. Let's see, we need more purple. All right. And don't forget the area over here as well. Just going to smear in some more black. Maybe a little blue. area. All right, so now we have a pretty good base coat. You can just run your paintbrush over the whole thing if you want to try to blend it a little better. If you wanted to go back in and add a different color in, you absolutely can layer as much as you want on this. I don't like how bright purple that was, so I'm going to tone it down and just add a little bit in there. So there you have the base for your sky. As you can see, this is why we like to protect our surface. Um, I particularly am a messy painter. It's how I feel most creative. 
So the next thing we're doing is we're going to take one of the paper towels that we have. We're going to kind of just crumple it up. And we're going to dab to try to create more of that um, space look. So we're actually going to start with our black. And you don't need a lot. And you're going to kind of start dabbing. And then you can kind of just keep spacing it out as a, a sponging type technique. As you can see, it's kind of creating more of that like depth. You're going to want to keep just kind of doing that. Again, no rhyme or reason, just have fun with it. All right, when you like that look, then you're going to take and kind of do the same. Again, same paper towel, doesn't matter. You're going to do the same in your purple. And you're going to kind of dab it out where you want a little bit of like a purple like galaxy moment. And you're going to sponge it out, see how it kind of diffuses that a bit. You can dab in your blue. We'll cover this area that I don't really like how streaky it looked. Just like that, no more streaks. So again, just kind of keep playing with this until you get a look that you like. One thing that is important to note, you're going to want to make sure you're dabbing straight up and down. If you swipe, you will probably remove some of the paint and you'll get some splotchy areas. Like you can see here, I kind of uh, didn't listen to my own rules. Because if you do that, see how it makes a streak. So we're just going to dab that out. You can use more or less paper towels if you find this is starting to get to be too wet or too anything like that. You can always switch out for a new paper towel if you would like. Yeah, and you're just gonna keep doing this until you feel happy with what you see. For me, I think I'm gonna stop here. So this you can make sure you just throw away with. We don't need it anymore. So we're gonna remove it from the area so you don't make more of a mess. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to splatter some stars. Now we're going to want to rinse our brush. To rinse your brush, you just stick it in the water. And you're going to just kind of swirl it around. Carefully don't spill it. Carefully don't make a mess. Until basically all of the paint is off of your brush. This is where having a clean paper towel nearby is useful. Because what I like to do is I basically will just take and then just wipe the water off. So um, brush doesn't have to be totally dry but you do want to make sure that you have majority of the water so it's not dripping. So this next thing we're going to do is going to be a little messy. Um, again, that's why we make sure our area is covered. Um, you can use your brush or if you have an old toothbrush or anything like that, that can work. But we're basically going to do the paint um, splatter technique to create just kind of randomized white that will be our stars and galaxy. So that being said, Go ahead and dip your brush into the white and then I just kind of hold my finger and I just kind of tap all over. Again, this is where if you have like a paintbrush, you could flick, but just kind of keep doing this until you have as much or little stars as you would like. Keep in mind, your first strips are always going to use kind of large, so try to space those out and then just kind of keep going. The beauty of this painting today is that it really can be as messy or as organized as you would like to make it. Hopefully that doesn't require too much exceptional skill or anything like that and that you are able to create a painting that you're proud of even if you're not a skilled painter yourself. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with that look. Go ahead and wipe up any areas if you feel you need to. All right, 
So the next thing we're gonna do, we actually don't need to worry about paint or cleaning your brush because we're gonna continue with white. We're gonna redraw in our circles with a nice coat of white so we have a fresh start. So go ahead and start. Again, you should be able to basically see where your circle was. And if you go a little bit bigger, that's totally fine. Those lines were basically there just to kind of help guide us. So I'm just really quick filling this in so we have a flat coat of white to start working with when we get to our orange. Just carefully trying to go around the edge. All right, now we're gonna do the head. So that's our basic body that will be our citronaut. Now, the citronaut also has, remember, his body is an orange, so he does have two leaves that come off his neck. I find it's probably better to go ahead and put in our white now. So we're just going to make a basic leaf shape right here at the neck. Again, you can kind of freehand this, have fun with it. And just going to basically put that in in white as well to give our good base coat for later. Match on the other side. If it goes off the canvas, that's totally fine. If you see how it's mixing in the colors, also totally fine. This is just a base coat. All right. Now, make sure you put your brush in your water. We're going to let make sure this dries. The good thing with acrylic paint is it does dry very quickly. Um, if you have bigger splotches like this, just be careful because they will stay wet a little longer since they're thick. Um, so just make sure you don't smear your hand across them. Um, but just kind of give a moment for this uh, base coat to dry. While you're doing that, you can go ahead and be cleaning your brush. And while we're letting it dry, we're gonna work on mixing our green color. So I'm just gonna set this aside so that I don't make a mess, but I stay in the camera here. So on your palette, or if you picked up a kit in advance, you should have an empty cup. As hopefully we all know, yellow and blue make our green. So I always find it best to scoop the lighter color first. I'm just gonna to wanna to take a couple scoops of that. We don't need a whole lot of green, so you don't have to worry about how much you're making, but you wanna make sure that you have enough so there is your yellow. Don't worry about washing your brush. Swipe it off on the paper towel. That's enough so you don't uh, cross contaminate your colors. Then you don't need as much blue. Uh, one of the things with paint, your darker colors can be overpowering. So you don't need a full like 50-50 ratio. So take that and now we're just gonna mix it. As you can see here, this is already more of like a teal color. So the blue is already much stronger than my yellow. So that being said, wipe off as much as you can. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put some more yellow in mine. Keep balancing your colors until you have the shade of green that you would like. Um, remember it is leaves of an orange, so it is more of your traditional green. Um, just keep going back and forth, get the green that you like and you should be okay to go. I'm pretty happy with that one. So that will be the green that we use. All right, clean your brush again. Make sure it's dry. Gonna move my painting back over. Ooh, see, as you can see, I accidentally smudged it. That's totally fine. Again, this is meant to be very uh, fluid type painting and when we finish we're going to go through some finishing touches we'll be able to fix those type of things so don't worry about any mistakes just yet who knows they might become happy little accidents um, or they might get covered up anyways as part of your painting process Oh, 
All right, now that this is mostly dry, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So again, thinking of working from the background to the foreground, we're gonna paint the orange body first. And to do that, we're just gonna start putting it on. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of visualize where I want the base of those leaves to be. But if you overpaint it and then have to paint um, a layer of white again, that's totally fine. So just kind of fill in that whole white. As you can see, you can still see a lot of underneath, which is okay because oranges don't have a perfect surface as it is. Um, this is one of the downsides of this brand of paint and working with a thinner paint is that it can be very uh, transparent in this way. So you can see a lot of the streaks, you can see through it, but acrylic paint, you can always just build on layers and layers as it dries. So that's fine. But also I kind of prefer the way it looks as we kind of create this imperfect orange look. Um, try to follow your brush strokes around the circle. Um, it'll help since you see your strokes, it will help kind of give dimension of that roundness to the shape and give that a moment to kind of dry. The issue here, if you don't let it dry, you actually could end up scraping some of the layers off because it'll form kind of like a goopy texture. Um, think of like, you know, Elmer's glue when it's halfway through painting or halfway through drying and um, it kind of becomes tacky. That tackiness will stick to the brush. So as you're running your brush over it, it's gonna actually peel off some of the paint. So that's why it's kind of important to let um, layers dry before you just keep adding on top of it. we should be able to get going again. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more orange. This time I'm gonna be putting it on a little bit thicker because this is gonna be a little bit more of an advanced technique. If you wanna leave it flat orange, that's totally fine. For those that want to attempt kind of getting a little bit more fancier, um, you can work with me. So again, this is using what I call the wet on wet method where we're using our canvas to blend. Now. That being said, I want to try to create some depth, meaning I'm going to have the light coming from here. So we're going to paint some highlights on this side and some shadows here. Now I traditionally, as long as I'm not using a dark color like black, I don't usually wash my brush in between each and every color because um, we're blending right here. So I'm just going to take a dab of yellow and just kind of keep smearing it in this while the paint's still wet to kind of create that look like the light is hitting it from this side. Then when you're done with the highlights, again, you should always start with the lighter colors first. You're gonna go into your black. Now keep in mind, black is gonna be a very overpowering color. So we just need a teeny tiny bit. Wipe off your brush so you don't have that yellow still on there. A teeny tiny little bit. Like y'all, when I say teeny tiny, like I mean like teeny tiny. So that being said, we're just gonna kind of put that right along this edge here and blend. Yeah, see, we didn't even need more than that. Now, if you don't like the way it looks, you can add more orange. If you wanna just keep working on blending. Now, I would say after you use black, make sure you just kind of wipe 
your brush on that paper towel to get as much of that paint off. And then you can come back in here with some more orange. I want a little bit more yellow. I want, I like my highlights to be pretty harsh. And then even just to make it really blinding, I'm gonna put a thick blob of white that I'm not even gonna blend. So that for the most part is the body of our citronon. The other thing we have to do is his arms. Um, not a lot of detail here to his arms. He didn't have really detailed hands. So again, I just kind of wipe the paint off. I'm gonna go in here with my white because we gotta let, lay that base coat down. And basically he just kind of has his arms. There's one arm and his hands just kind of draw a little blob like that. No super details necessary. And his other hand is going to come about here as his shoulder. Again, just getting white. Doesn't have to be perfect. If it's kind of muddy, that's fine. And we're just going to draw his other hand just like so. Okay, so now we need to let that dry. While we do that, let's go ahead and wash a brush. We're gonna start working on the head. Now, the Citronaut, he's wearing a helmet. And the front part of the helmet here is like a triangle where it's got um, a green. And then his face is like a yellowish lime green. So we're gonna go ahead and start doing that now. Since this has got a base white, if you kind of want to sketch out where you're going to go, it's always good to just kind of take white so you can kind of envision where the helmet's going to go. So, and you can use a picture as reference, which I strongly recommend. But we're just going to come around here, loop around, and there you can see will be the base of our helmet. So we're going to start while, since we have our brush in white, we're going to go ahead and paint the white part of the helmet. So this is where you, the this part, your base coat should be good and dry. So you don't have to worry about um, seeing through. You should be focusing on getting a good solid coat of white. Now this is another one of those times that again, you can leave it just like that. If you want to try to add a little bit more depth, Again, teeny tiny amount of black. We're going to use the wet on wet method where we just put a little there and we just kind of blend it directly into the white. You would dip back into the white if it dries to kind of create that shadow. If you're not happy with the first time, let it dry a little bit, paint over the whole white, try again. You want to leave it just solid white, that's totally fine too. Get the excess paint off your brush. Then the next thing we're going to do is going to be that front part of the helmet. So using the green that you mixed, you can go ahead and just put that right in there. Again, it's mostly a triangle shape. Just kind of smooth it out. This is going to require a couple coats. Again, because it used mostly that yellow, which is more of a transparent color. So go ahead and we can be letting that dry mostly. We can add in the base color for um, the leaves right now, since we have the basic green. So we'll go ahead and we'll paint that on. And remember, your lines don't have to be perfect, as you can see, mine aren't, but I'm not going to let it get to me. There we go, so we got some leaves in there. I'm going to 
This is turning out pretty cool so far, guys. given a little bit this part should be mostly dry now so we're going to come back in and do another layer of green kind of just putting it on there all right so again here's what we're going to say you can leave it like this if you want if you want to add a little bit more depth i'm going to add a little bit of white to try to create a highlight again we're pretending the light's coming from this side I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight to this side. You can see, maybe darken the green here. I don't want to use a harsh black this time for a shadow because this is still pretty much all on the furthest side of the body that would be facing the light. So we're just going to really amp up this highlight. And I'm even going to leave a thicker line that we're not going to blend. There we go. Again, these are just kind of small ways of adding a little bit more detail to your work without necessarily an exceptional amount of skill or a depth, in-depth uh, knowledge of blending and color theory. So it's kind of a fun way to do it. Now we're going to come back to our leaves here. We're going to do more green. And this time for my highlights, since this is more organic, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow for my highlights. And just because I don't want it to look the same as the top of the helmet. So kind of put that yellow on there and just kind of blend it to where you like it. And again, just emphasizing if you haven't had luck or you don't like this look or you're not able to achieve it by doing the blending, don't worry about it. Just leave it as flat color. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with how those leaves look. Still waiting on this orange to be really good and dry. So we're going to work on the face. Now, as you can tell by the reference picture, um, the face is mostly a lime green. So again, with the theory that the darker colors can be very overpowering, we're going to start with the brightest color, which is yellow. Now also keep in mind, I haven't changed my brush at all. If your brush is very um, heavy with paint, maybe you want to wash it, or if you just want to keep doing this to get the excess paint off, so that is like this, totally fine. Um, it's whatever you're comfortable with. So with my dirty brush, we're just going to come right in here and paint around so we will be a little bit careful around our edges to make sure that we're hitting where we're supposed to be but not going too far into areas we shouldn't be and now because my brush already had some green on it we're already getting that kind of lime color instead of a perfect yellow as you can see what's on my board versus what's the pure color if you want it to be a little bit more green you can totally go in and add some if you were happy with the color you had, totally fine. Just go through and try to blend it, make it as smooth as possible. Now, because he's going to have some facial features, I'm not going to worry too much about shading and depth here because there's already going to be enough going on that it's not really that important. So I'm happy with that shade of green there. Again, keep going back and forth between yellow and green to get the shade that you prefer. Now, I think up here we're pretty good, so we're going to move back to finishing up his body. So, since we're switching the color palette entirely, we're going from greens and yellows to oranges. We're going to go ahead and rinse our brush. All right, so with a clean brush, we're going back in with orange. We're going to start in that backhand first. Putting on a nice orange coat. We're going to do this arm next. This 
So now that you've got your orange on there, we're going to do the same thing we did with the body where we kind of add some highlighting. So first dipping in yellow, kind of just smearing where you want some highlights to go. Wipe off the excess and blend. All right, brush off that excess using a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of black. We're gonna kind of come in and do the bottom of the arm. I'm gonna add a little bit there. Wipe off that excess because we don't need a lot. Keep wiping off excess if it seems to be overpowering. Black can be a tricky one to work with, so if it intimidates you, just don't worry about shading. Maybe you just want to do just the highlighting part. Totally fine. At the end, we want to make sure that you like your final result. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the other arm. I'm going to add some blackness along here. Blackness along here. Again, remembering if we're thinking the light's coming from this way, it's going to be the underside portions of the arms that are going to have a little bit of shadow. Touch up a little bit of orange for down the center. Touch up any other areas that you think need it. And there we have the body. So the next part would be where he has his legs. And this is where we're going to use our pure black. So black's such a dark color. I didn't bother washing my brush. Basically, his legs just come straight down at a slight inward angle. He's got pointy little feet. Now, we're not seeing any um, division of his legs because it's cut off here by the bottom. So we're just going to paint this all flat black. And just kind of make sure you're careful around the edge of your orange. Now to add a little depth, we're going to add just a teeny bit of white to our edge. So we can blend that out and make like a gray right on there as you can see. And I'm going to go ahead and do it to the side even though I know that technically should be the shadow side. It's just going to kind of help differentiate where his body is versus the background a little. I'm also going to be just a little bit here in the middle since that would be the start of the separation where his thighs would separate into two separate legs. There we go. Blend that out. So again, not important to have super detail, but just enough that you can kind of see that there is um, something there, but that it's not the background. From here, we're actually going to leave the citronella alone for a little bit, let all of this paint dry really well. Um, the next thing we're gonna start working on is our stars. So we can create any constellation that we would like. Keep in mind that constellations usually are depicted with straight lines connecting between two stars. So whatever you write, make sure you're using straight lines. If you want to practice on some paper, Absolutely do that first. Um, again, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Got a piece of paper. So if you're thinking, thinking of like a uh, digital clock or like a scoreboard where it would have your um, cells like this that could create any number. So thinking kind of in those ways, you could do you C, F, you could do your name, you 
you could do. Again, you can do anything you would like in this area. Just keep in mind that it is a smaller area. If you want to practice how big of a space you have, you can always take your thing. You can kind of mark, okay, so I have from here until here. And so now you know you basically you need to fit your word into here. So if my name was super long, you might not be able to fit in these spaces, but um, you can fit basically anything you want here. You have to do smaller, you have to do bigger. Again, practice as much as you want. You also could write multiple things. You do have the whole right side of the canvas to work with. So once you're kind of happy and you know what you want to write, you put that aside. Put your, get your painting back. Okay. So I'm going to clean the brush because we were last working with black. dry it off all right and then now using white and your brush you're just going to draw out your name or again whatever you're wanting to put if you're not feeling super comfortable and confident with using your brush you can use a pencil over it remember do not press hard and you should be able to kind of see your marking you won't necessarily be able to erase but it will be light enough that you could easily paint over if you had to but hopefully you don't have to because we don't want to ruin up this gorgeous texture that we made here. So go ahead. I'm going to do SKW for safe night week. So what we're going to work on, we're just going to make lines. Again, remember they're technically going to be connected by stars, so they don't have to be perfect. So S. Okay, and then we're going to have W. Remember, big thing here, you can do any type of letters you want as long as your lines are straight. That is what's going to make it look like a constellation. So you just kind of keep going over it until you're happy with the shapes of them. You're happy with the thickness. If you wanted to add more, for example, I'm going to add a Twenty one here with for twenty twenty one. You can also add a shooting star if you would like. Basically, any type of cosmic element to add a little bit more depth and shine and kind of a cartoonish element, I'm going to, again, not clean my brush, but go right over my lines with yellow. Let me kind of just blend in. Again, can be a little sloppy, totally fine. I'm not wanting to be perfectly even because it is connecting constellations.
I'm going to go back in with some white just because I want to keep more depth here. And there is no perfection here. You can be doing whatever you want. So then with the mess already on your brush, we're gonna now kind of draw stars on every corner or point that we have here. Now, when I do stars, I kind of just do little X's um, instead of doing, you know, the five points like we normally were taught. So just kind of drawing in some X's again, they don't have to be perfect. I kind of try to do the outside corners as bigger. Of course, these inner ones, and as you can see, I'm jumping all over the place. No rhyme or reason, just kind of wherever my brush sees, oh, and we need a star. We're kind of putting one, re-dipping back into the white as much as you need. Now, if you're wanting less of this cartoon look, and you don't want to do the X's, you could always just kind of dab on um, white dots like we'll do here. To kind of mark your stars if you prefer that look. Here I want a big star because that's, that's my shooting star. And we still need a couple X's here. Remember, it's basically every corner. Think of it like connect the dots. Every time you would turn your point or turn your pencil to a different direction is where there would be a dot. So it's kind of the same concept with the constellation. So there we have that want to go in and add more details you can you want to leave it like this you can if you wanted to go around and add some more stars in this area you absolutely can be it dots be it more of these x's since i kind of smeared this a little bit i'm just going to go ahead and just turn that into a star look at that happy little accident um, just to keep it balanced we're going to go ahead and just put one over here all right so at this point we're mostly done with painting all we have left to do is do the outlines of our citronaut, draw in his face, and we'll call it a day. Now, if you picked up a kit from us before, you only got one brush and it should be about this size. If you're working from home, maybe you have your own paintbrush set um, where you have a more fine tip brush that's made for outlining. However, I find I have a shaky hand. When I'm doing stuff like this, it's meant to be more fun. I don't want to worry about paint. So that's where you can use a handy dandy Sharpie or a paint pen or anything like that that you might have. We're gonna use this for our outlines. I feel like I have a lot of control over this. The lines are pretty consistent um, and that's where we're able to go. However, before you use a Sharpie, you're gonna wanna make sure that it is very dry. Any areas that are still wet are going to attach itself to the felt tip of the of your pen and then it's going to kind of glomp and create uneven lines and things like that. So um, now would be a good time to take a bathroom break, a snack break, um, maybe take a drink and hydrate, um, whatever you need to do. Just go ahead and let this part completely dry and come back to it when it's finished. All right, now that we're all pretty dry, this is going to be a little wet, but that's fine. We're leaving this part alone. Just careful not to drag your hand in it if you're right-handed. But we're going to go ahead and take our Sharpie, and we're going to start outlining. This is a good time when you want your reference photo um, by, which we'll make sure it's up on the screen here. So just kind of fun fact, the original Citronaut was designed by Norman Van Meter. Um, it was kind of supposed to tie in back when we were 
Florida Technical University, combining the two major industries of Florida, which was the citrus industry and the space program. So that's where our citronaut came, the first official mascot of our university. Um, so just kind of keeping that in mind, paying honor to who originally drew this character um, and who the photo we are referencing. So again, we're going to be using our Sharpie to outline. Be very careful not to mess this up. I'm right-handed. We're just going to move some stuff back in. And this can be where it might be easier too to turn your canvas versus turning your hand or body where you're going to make a mess. So now I don't have to worry so much about that being right-handed. So we're just going to go ahead and start outlining. Now this is a good way we can cover up some of those imperfect areas that we have. You're not going to see it anyways. So just kind of start getting to work doing our outline. See how I have kind of a mess up of our white showing here? I'm just going to cover it. Now there's no white visible. Keep in mind, you shouldn't need to press too hard with your Sharpie. If for some reason your paint is not completely dry and you start noticing some goopies on it, you're going to kind of want to just come over and get whatever might be on the tip of your pen. If you see an area that you didn't quite cover in perfect line, just make your line thicker. There you go. You can still see the green showing through my black line there. So I'm just going to make that line a little thicker until you don't see the green. The great part about using a Sharpie, you get, again, that concise line. You're able to more freely draw it. Most of us are comfortable holding a Sharpie, using a Sharpie versus you might not be as comfortable with a brush in your hand um, as well as it's great it's dark it's consistent and it dries almost instantly so you don't have to worry about smearing it so now we're going to just draw our hands There's one arm. I'm going to go ahead and do this other arm. So you can see my Sharpie's kind of old. Hopefully yours is a little bit newer. Pull back over any lines that you're not happy with how they look. Right. Now we're going to do the curve of the body. All right, I'm going to have to go get a new Sharpie. This one's about dry. Sorry about that. My old Sharpie was dead, so I got a new one. Oh yeah, that's much better already. Again, just keep going through the whole outline of your citronaut. 
go as slow as you want. Go ahead and define in those legs that we put in. And there you have the outline citron. I'm going to go over a couple of these areas where my pen was really just not working with me here. come down a little bit more so drew it colored it in there we go now we're going to go ahead and do the face i always like leaving the hardest part for last by then hopefully you kind of feel really comfortable with outlining or have a little bit more confidence before you do something like a face because as you can imagine facial features are usually what we identify things as or become a focal point so we really want to make sure that looks good so again use your um, photo for reference this is probably the only detailed part of this painting that we're going to do. So our citronaut has two eyes. He's got a cute little nose. And then he's got a really wide smile. That's bigger on this side. So now you can just color that in. If you wanted to go back with a paintbrush and color that part in, totally fine. Then he's got his cheeks. He's got a cheek there, a line here. And then we can draw in his pupils. Now just adding some more detail if you wanted to. So you come in and draw the lines of the leaf. Totally optional. You can also do some dotting here in the shadow portion of your orange to kind of help show that texture. So all I'm doing is just kind of, it's called pointillism. And just kind of doing straight dots. Be careful you're going straight up and down and not dragging or else you'll get what we call tadpoles on the back end of your dots. So just kind of help showing in those shadows the texture of an orange peel. And there you have it. Now, the most important thing with any piece of art, it's not complete until you sign it. So that you can choose anything. If you want to go back into your paints and you can do a color, you can use your Sharpie, whatever you would prefer. I'm going to use my Sharpie. Now I'm going to take advantage of this white spot I have here. I always sign my artwork with my initials. Make it as fancy as you want. This is your mark showing to everyone that you are the artiste. And then I usually always put the year as well. That's just my personal preference. And there you have it. Some other things you could do if you wanted to finish it up. You could paint around the edges of your board. You could leave them. You could use your Sharpie. You could use washi tape. Um, basically whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and just do black along the edges just to make it clean. But if you wanted to at this point, you could be completely done. If you're going to go ahead and blacken the edges, it's always good to make sure you have your artwork facing away from you so that you're swiping the paint towards the back of the canvas. Then that way you don't have to worry about uh, accidentally messing up the artwork that you just created on the front side. And just carefully rotate it and keep going until you've done all four sides.
And this is completely unnecessary step. It's just going to give it that nice clean finish. It's going to make it look more, I don't want to say professional, but more gallery worthy. Because after all, this is a masterpiece that we just created. And we're done. Some other details if you wanted. Again, this is all about you having fun at this point. Since you've already drawn in your eyes, if you wanted to go in and do more details, you could now color in white. And then you'll redraw your pupil in once the white dries. And just because I like more of a cartoony look or a feel, I use the back end of my brush and just kind of dip it in the white. Or we could just get two white perfect little dots. There we go. And there you have your finished artwork. Hope you guys had fun doing this with us.